I want to take a quick moment to thank everyone that watches my videos and supports me and I hope that you guys enjoy my 666th car review here on YouTube. <laughs> All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1995 Cadillac Hearse. Up front is a 5.7 liter LT1 V8 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Hearse for a couple of reasons, but mainly this is my first ever Hearse. I've never driven something quite like this. Now I actually did a Cadillac Fleetwood, which this vehicle is based off of. I filmed one earlier this year, but driving a Hearse is something completely different. And so I'm excited to share that with you guys today. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are looking to help out the channel, there are some awesome links from our sponsors in the description below. There's an OBD2 Bluetooth sensor that will pair to your smartphone. There are con plates, which is a suction cup license plate mount for the front of your vehicle. And there's cash for cars if you're looking to sell your vehicle. Thank you to our sponsors, but let's get on with the video. Before we get back to the LT1, let's talk about this hearse because I'm sure a lot of people are curious about the bodies and a lot of people already know about the LT1s from GM. Well, a couple different coach builders actually built Cadillac hearses in the 90s. Superior built Cadillac hearses, but this is a federal coach builder Cadillac hearse. So back in the 90s, if you wanted a new hearse for your funeral home, you would go to Federal and pick out whatever options they had. You wouldn't actually go directly to Cadillac. And so you might see a different Cadillac hearse from 1995 and you might say, hey, that looks different. It has different moldings on the side. It looks a little different. Well, it's probably because it was built by a different coach builder. And we'll get into the specifics of the hearse when we talk about the back. So if you wanna skip, there are some chapter markers down below so you can find that if you want. But let's get back to that LT1. It doesn't make crazy horsepower. However, it's a very throaty, lopy, lazy V8. Are you going to run nines at the drag strip with this engine? Not in this current stock form, but I like to compare the LT1 to jeans, you know, the pants, because you can dress up jeans. You can wear a nice sweater, go out to dinner in some nice jeans and you're good. You can also work out in the garage with torn jeans. You could throw a flannel on it and work the farm with jeans. You could wear it to school, you could wear it to work, whatever it might be. And that's how I feel about the LT1. GM put them in a lot of the luxury cars, like the Fleetwood, like the Buicks of the time. But you could also find it in the Camaro. It was a little bit sportier and you can build the heads and bore and stroke the engine and make it a fast, quick engine. It's a very versatile engine from GM and that's always fun to see. Like I said, Paraduit is a four-speed automatic transmission, which is the 4L60E, which we've come to know and love from GM. They used it in God, everything. And it's fine here in the hearse. It does the job well and I don't have any complaints. Last but not least, the hearse is rear wheel drive and it actually has a GMC dually pickup truck rear end in it from Federal. So when this was built to be a hearse, they actually added that rear end for the extra dead weight. <laughs> But now we gotta talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I actually have digital gauges. I love this Cadillac, it has some really cool digital gauges from the 90s. And I just have my fuel on the left, speed in the center, and my odometers on the right. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it. It has the Cadillac logo, but it doesn't have any buttons or controls or anything of that nature. It does have the big pillowy airbag, which is very iconic 90s. And to the left of me, I have my lights and I have my Twilight Sentinel, which is really your automatic lights. Cadillac has used this verbiage since the late 80s. I originally saw it on the Cadillac Elante I reviewed. And it's just so funny to see this weird verbiage, but it, all it means is auto headlights. On the door, I have my power mirrors, locks, windows, and I do have my adjustments for the driver's seat. So I can adjust the tilt, down, up, back, or forward, which is super, super nice. However, as I'm pulling up now, I don't know who this person is, but I wanna be their friend. <laughs> I've never reviewed a PT Cruiser, can I please review it? I also have this giant grab handle for closing the doors because as you notice, there's no like 
pocket or anything to actually close the door. You have to grab this little handle, which is fine, just a little bit out of the ordinary. Moving into the center, I have the climate controls. Now this is very basic GM from this era. I do have a little digital readout, which is very nice. And I have auto temperature, which is great as well. The radio has since been changed out because most radios from the 90s were pretty bad. And then I do have a ashtray and cigarette lighter in the center. I don't actually get a center console on the floor. There's nothing mounted here, which is nice, especially given the bench seat. But I do have a center armrest for that bench seat with cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test and it barely just doesn't fit. I feel like if I really yanked on it, I might break it. So unfortunately, the Cadillac Hearse from 95 fails the big friggin' bottle test. I guess I'm not bringing my bottle with me to the afterlife. <laughs> But now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are Cadillac comfortable, which is fantastic. They're really, really nice. Honestly, really great lumbar support too, which I haven't really noticed in older Cadillacs. This is just set a little bit differently and I really enjoy the lumbar. Maybe it's a sign that I'm getting older. But they are power adjustable. The passenger side is also power adjustable, which is very nice. If you bring someone with you to the funeral, they can adjust their seats as well. Now we don't have back seats, but we do have a very interesting rear cargo space. So let's hop around back and talk about it. All right, so we're around the back of the 95 Cadillac hearse and we can open up this swing door here. This is the main rear entrance to the hearse. So you fold this out like so, and it's so you could slide the coffin in and out. These are actually rollers. I never knew this, I've never really inspected a hearse before but these are actual rollers so you can roll the casket all the way in and then when you want to secure it down you have this so when the casket is in you would place this at whatever length the casket is and you would tighten it so then it sort of clamps it there's one all the way up there and then there's one right here so you actually clamp the casket in which is pretty interesting and you can just leave it up there i do have some like storage areas over here and stuff like that but we'll hop around the side here once we close oh forgot to pick this up close this here nice curtains on the inside and everything but if we come around the side and get a better view, more curtains. And so this is the side view looking into the back of the hearse. Super, super cool. I also have some storage down here, which is nice. This is actually where you'll find like the jack and the spare tire and things like that. Um, but obviously not a whole lot of other amenities back here. Super, super cool. If we come up here, we do have this sort of glass slash plexiglass type almost taxi cab sort of divider from obviously the casket to the drivers, which is pretty unique and you don't see that on many cars. But this is the inside of a 95 Cadillac hearse. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I absolutely love the look of this Cadillac hearse. It's so menacing, it's dark, it's just so period correct. I just, I love looking at it. I think it's so unique and different. And it's just really, really, truly fantastic. And that sort of starts to blend into my final thoughts here on this hearse. This is a very interesting car for me because it's not often that I review a car and it makes me think about my own mortality. When you see a hearse, there's only one thing it's really used for, and that is to carry a dead body to the cemetery. It's not like seeing a used cop car where Yes, if you see a cop car in your rear view mirror, it's gonna be a bad day, but sometimes seeing a cop car could be really relieving if you're in distress and need help. The hearse, there is no good days that you see a hearse. When the hearse comes out, something's happened in the last week or so, and it's never anything good. And yet driving this hearse, it's interesting being at the helm of the hearse. I am controlling this hearse right now. Look. <laughs> That felt like a genuine boat. Like it really felt like we got hit with a wake. It's interesting controlling this because I actually feel like right now I control my own future. Whenever I see a hearse, it's a slightly depressing sight, but driving a hearse, it's different. I'm not sad driving this. I'm not thinking about my funeral one day. I'm actually thinking about the present. How lucky am I that I get to sit up in the front. Everyone at some point in history 
will be in the back of one. That's just what's going to happen. But to be able to drive one, it's almost like I'm taking the reins and saying, no, riding in the back, that's not the final keystroke in the story of my life. I have the power now. I'm driving the hearse. I'm controlling what happens. And that to me is a really cool feeling. I came into this review thinking that a hearse would be the spookiest car to drive and it would make me uneasy and that it wouldn't be a good experience, but I've actually had quite the opposite. This is actually like a exciting experience. This makes me wanna go out and live because it's only a matter of time that I'm back in one of these. But for right now, I'm not. And that's exciting to me. That is cool. Well, I wanna give a huge thank you to Andrew for letting me take out his hearse. This thing is super cool. This is my first hearse, but I certainly hope it's not my last. Such a cool experience, and I'm so glad I was able to bring this to you guys for my 666th review. That's just the most special thing ever. So huge thank you to Andrew. I can't thank him enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.